Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to College of the Albemarle Dare. We are so excited to have you here with us today on this beautiful campus, on this beautiful day in beautiful Manio, North Carolina, in beautiful Dare County, North Carolina. So we are so excited. We've been looking forward to this day for so long. So this is a huge day for COA, for Manio, Dare County, COA 7 County Service Area, and our region. And let me just thank you for taking the time to come out and be with us today. I'm Jack Bagwell. I'm the president of College of the Albemarle. And as you know, we serve seven counties. And seven counties have come together in a variety of ways to support this college for many, many years. And you see a prime example of that in front of you today. And so in my welcoming comments, the chairman, Chairman Woodard's going to go into more detail with the Board of Commissioners and the story of this building and some other things. But before we begin, I want to at least thank Chairman Woodard, Bobby Outen, and the Board of Commissioners of Dare County for their support of this facility. And let's give them a round of applause as we get started, if we would, please. As we have looked forward to this day for so long, the thing I've worried about most is here, and that's doing introductions because there's always a chance that you're going to miss someone. And I will tell you right now, there's a chance I'm going to miss someone that I should be introducing because so many people are responsible for being here, uh, us being here today at this event at this time in the history of the college. But I'm going to do my best, and I trust that you'll give me a little grace if I leave someone out. So I'm going to start with the... Uh, College of the Albemarle Board of Trustees that serve all seven counties. And when I call your name, if you'll stand and we'll recognize you at the end together by applause. Dr. Reed Corbett, Tommy Fulcher, David Harris, Chair Kersey, Paul O'Neill, Robert Pippin, George Thomas, Dr. Emily Walker, Bob Woodard, and Mr. Marion Harris, and this Travis Gilliard. They I almost forgot one. That's why I looked back. So could we recognize the uh, Board of Trustees of College of the Albemarle? Thank you all. Another important partner in all of this is our College Foundation. And we have tremendous support for the things that we do as a college. This building is beautiful and the, the uh, county did a fantastic job to help us get to this point, but the college was responsible for putting furnitures, furniture fixtures and equipment in this building. And we could not have gotten there without our foundation. So. It's about $1.3 million in technology, furniture, couches, TVs to do something like this. And I'd like to recognize our Foundation Board of Directors. We have our president of the Foundation Board here, Kathy Stallings, on the stage. And then we have some other members of the board. Taylor Sugg, I believe, is here. If you'd raise your hand, Taylor, Jeff Aldridge, Clark Twitty, and Twitty Company, Brian White, I know, is here and Marsha Bryant. So thank you all. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for the Foundation's work on our behalf. We have some other VIPs that are with us today representing different offices through the state and locally, and I'm going to do my best to try to get everybody here recognized. P.J. Connolly is representing the governor's office. Thank you for being here, Mr. Connolly. Dr. Shirley Carraway is a board member for the North Carolina Community College System Board. Thank you for being here, Dr. Carraway. From Congressman Greg Murphy's office, we have Leslie Ginsky. Thank you for being here, Leslie. And from Senator Tom Tillis's office, Trey Lewis. There's Trey. Trey. And from Senator Richard Burr's office, Betty Jo Shepard. Thank you both for being here. 
And we have Senator Bob Steinberg with us. So thank you for being here, Senator Steinberg. <laughs> Representative Bobby Hanning. We have the Dare County Board of Education represented here. I'm not sure that I've seen the superintendent, Dr. Farley, but the Board of Education, there he is. Hey, how are you? Thanks for being here. <laughs> North Carolina Workforce Development Board is represented. Can you raise your hand and be acknowledged? We appreciate the partnership we have with you all. Back in the back, they're being shy, but they're back there. And then here on the Outer Banks, you'll see that uh, we have some naming recognitions throughout, and we're going to have some other events to recognize some uh, named individuals or some rooms that are named after individuals and corporations. But we have the Outer Banks Hospital Board of Directors represented here today also. So where are you, Outer Banks Hospital? Thank you all for being here. Yes. A couple other individuals that are here that I want to recognize that I scribbled in, and hopefully I can recognize my own writing. But we have Travis Twyford. Dr. Twyford was the interim president of COA before I was hired, so left the place in really good shape, and I appreciate Dr. Twyford, can you? Thank you for being here. And we also have the president of... Mid-Atlantic Christian University with us here, John Maurice. So, John Maurice, thank you for being here with us as well. So, I'm going to end my VIP recognitions with the two most important groups, no offense to any of you, Board of Trustees or Governor's Office or any, but those are our COA faculty and staff, the VIPs that they are. So, faculty and staff, if you're with us, please raise your hand if you are one of the faculty staff members. Thank you all for what you do every day. And then finally, last but certainly not least, our COA students. And we have a number of students, several up here with us, but some mixed throughout. So COA students, please stand or raise your hand and be recognized. And as I said, I'm absolutely positively sure that I left somebody whose name I should have called just now or some group that I should have called. But please know that we appreciate every contribution that you've made to making this happen, whether that was voting for one of the Board of Commissioners to make this happen, providing some funds yourself, being here as a uh, past member of the faculty staff or student body, we are so appreciative of all of you, and in my book, everybody who's here is a VIP, and we appreciate you being here with us. And at this time, I'm going to turn over the microphone to Chairman Bob Woodard for his remarks, and he's going to have the bulk of the program. So Chairman Woodard, the microphone is yours, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. And certainly thank you all for joining us today for this ceremony. This is truly a momentous occasion as we gather to cut this ribbon and to officially celebrate the completion of the College of the Albemarle's brand new academic building right here in Manio on Dare campus. As all of you are here today know, this state-of-the-art facility and the classes and programs that will be held within its walls will provide life-changing opportunities for those in our community who want to pursue a high-quality education right here at home. For the past few weeks, I've given a lot of thought to all that has taken place throughout the past several years. All of the visions that we've had for this facility since day one, the challenges that we have faced all along the way, and the many accomplishments that have ultimately led us to this exciting day. As we celebrate the completion of the cutting edge facility, this afternoon, it may seem like it was just yesterday 
that we were gathered right here on this site for the groundbreaking ceremony back in December of 2020. But folks, let me take a moment to remind you how much support, dedication, and hard work has gone into this project, which has been underway for quite some time. It began in 2017 when County Manager Alton and I were approached by Paul O'Neill, then chairman of the COA Board of Trustees, and Dr. Candy Dienemeyer of COA about the possibility of building new campus or new facilities on Roanoke Island. After that initial conversation that we had with Paul and Dr. Dietermeyer, I expressed my personal concerns if Dare County was going to invest in a major capital project for a Dare campus in Dare, that I felt the board would not be willing to do this without some assurances from COA that our DARE students could take all of their classes in DARE County and not have to travel to Elizabeth City for classes. After some COA reassurances, the board felt comfortable moving forward with the capital project and plans for construct constructing this new building began to take shape and it quickly started to gain momentum. Now folks, I had no problem convincing my board to support this project. Every one of them about educating our children and every one of them were totally on board with what we decided to do. We met, our fellow commissioners met many, many times, and we had numerous conversations about our vision for creating a top-notch community college in Dare County, one that local students would be excited about and certainly proud to attend. From the very beginning, back when all of this was still just a vision for the future of educational opportunities in Dare County, our board provided unwavering support for the project, and throughout its journey, our commissioners have remained committed to transforming this shared vision into a remarkable reality that stands before you today. I'm gonna to ask my fellow commissioners to stand as I introduce them and remain standing until I ask them to be seated. I'd like, <laughs> I'd like, and the reason for that is I, I want to, I want to talk about these six fellow board commissioners of mine. Vice Chairman Wally Overman, Commissioner Urban Bateman, Commissioner Danny Couch, Commissioner Steve House, Commissioner Rob Ross, and Commissioner Jim Tobin. As you can see from the tireless efforts that so many individuals have spent working behind the scenes to finally bring this new building to life long before the first shovel ever struck the sand and construction officially began. A project like this one does not happen overnight. And such a massive endeavor would never come to fruition without the substantial amount of funding that is required to get this ball rolling to ensure that this new academic building would be built. Dare County, these six fellow commissioners of mine stepped up to the plate, made a significant financial commitment to the project, one that ultimately included over $16 million in local funding. Once again, this vision of my fellow commissioners is all about educating our kids. And I could not be pr more proud to serve with each and every one of you gentlemen. Thank you for what you've done.
the vice chairman was still standing. He said, you ain't told me to sit down yet. <laughs> Let me also take a minute to recognize our county manager, Bobby Alton. Bobby, will you stand, please, for a moment? <laughs> Dave Clawson's out here somewhere. Dave, where are you? Dave's right back there in the back. Our, our uh, county financial director. And certainly, last but not least, where's Dustin? Where's Dustin Peel? There's Dustin standing right next to him. He's our county project and per project purchase manager for all of their hard work. They played pivoting roles in seeing this project through from start to finish. And without all of their hard work and dedication, we certainly wouldn't be standing here today. County Manager, Dave Clawson, Dustin, thank you for what you do. <laughs> Folks, I can assure you that the investment that Dare County has made in this project and the level of involvement we've had all along the way goes above and beyond a financial contribution to the construction and maintenance of this facility. We knew that with the construction of the state-of-the-art facility also came the opportunity not only to enhance, but to expand the different types of curriculum that would be offered and the degrees and certifications that could be earned at COA's their campus. To help us gain a better understanding of the most pressing needs in our community, the CO COA Task Force was formed in 2017. It was chaired not only by, by our own commissioner, Mr. Danny Couch, the task force members also included the late Tom Murphy, as well as, as, well as Artie Tillett, Dean Sweeney, Malcolm Fearing, and former resident Ann Patera. Over the course of just a few months, the COA task force held five meetings to gather input from the community about which fields of study were in high demand and among area students as well as local workforce. Members of the task force worked to determine how this new facility could best serve Dare County's students and their families. After receiving the feedback from members of the public, the task force brought forth ideas of programs and certifications that would help to address some of Dare County's most pressing needs. One of these key findings that, mo were, that was discovered during these meetings was the need for a facility that could serve Dean Sweeney, this is exactly what you wanted, and that serve as flex space. Flex space that could easily and affordably be altered to accommodate curriculum changes. This flex space concept will ultimately make, a po make it possible for COA to adapt its programs as the needs of our students and local workforce continue to change and evolve over the years to come. I want to thank everyone who served on the COA task force and especially Commissioner Couch for his leading task force efforts. Let me share with you just some of the programs that the task force recommended, talked about, and what the college has put together as far as curriculum. This is, a, this is incredible, folks. Associates in Arts, Associates in Science, Associates in Arts Teacher Preparation, Associates in Science te Teacher Preparation, Associates in General Education, Associates in General Education Nursing Pathway, Associates in Fine Arts, Visual Arts, Basic Law Enforcement Training, Business Administration, Global Business, Criminal Justice, Early Childhood Education, Fundamentals of Computer Programming Certificates, HVAC certification and diploma, health and fitness science certificate and an associates in applied science, health information technology, 
health IT foundations certification, medical office administration, nurse's aid diploma, patient representative certificate, welding technology certifi for certification and diploma. Those are just some of the curriculum issues. Continuing education would be CPR classes, community health workers, drones instruction, emergency medical science, Excel, hospital leadership, introduction to electri electrical, marine diesel engine repair, medical assistance, notary public, North Carolina vehicle safety inspection, nurses aid one, nurses aid two, OSHA construction safety, pharmacy technology, pool and spa certification, and QuickBooks. Unbelievable curriculum, folks, and I can't take my hats off to Dean Sweeney and his staff for that. As the plans for this new facility started to come together, we also held numerous meetings with our architects for the project. Boomerang Design. Our goal was to develop a design that would not only complement the charm and character of the town of Manio, but one that would create an innovative environment where young people would want to spend their time pursuing educational opportunities. I can't help but look over to my left, Dr. Bagwell, Boomerang, that grassy area is doing exactly what we wanted it to do for our kids. Look at them out there enjoying that, enjoying that uh, lawn today. <clears throat> we asked and the team at Boomerang Design more than delivered. They did an exceptional job of understanding our goals when it came to developing this property into what you see today. And if you think the outside of this building is impressive, just wait until you get a chance to see what's waiting inside. I'd like to thank everyone on the Boomerang team for all of their efforts to create a unique and inspiring space where our Dare County students will be excited to attend classes. Earlier, I mentioned that the groundbreaking for the building took pay place just 16 months ago in December of 2022. And Barnhill Contracting went to work immediately and has been working on this project diligently ever since. It's been an absolute thrill to see the progress being made week by week and month by month. They have done an outstanding job attending to every detail to construct an academic building that, can all be, that we can all be proud of today for years to come. And folks, they did it in record time with all the construction that's taking place throughout the country in Dare County and all the material shortages. It's unbelievable. They came in only a couple of months behind, but we're way ahead of schedule. We weren't even supposed to have classes until the fall. Dr. Bagwell's thinking about or looking into actually having classes this summer. So um, Barnhill, thank you for the job that you did. It's just been phenomenal. Over the last several months, <clears throat> enrollment here at the campus has significantly increased. Much of this increase is a direct result of the expansion in the number and types of classes that I just spoke about and mentioned a minute ago being offered right here in Dare, Camp, in Dare County on the Dare COA campus. But a significant portion of that increase is also undoubtedly due in part to the DARE Guarantee Scholarship, which this Board of, Trust, Board of Directors in DARE County agreed to and established in 2019. Our board took it to the next level, not only in, in funding this facility, but taking it to the next step level to make sure our students would come to this campus. Thanks to $250,000 in scholarship funding that's provided annually by this Board of Commissioners, makes it possible for eligible students 
who have recently graduated from Adair County High School to attend the College of Arbol with no out-of-pocket cost for tuition. Did you hear what I said? No out-of-pocket cost for tuition. And I'll say it a third time, no out-of-pocket cost for tuition. Since its implementation in the spring of 2020, 241 scholarships have been awarded, amounting to over $236,000 in DARE guarantee scholarships to students throughout DARE County community, ensuring that our students who may not have the financial resources to further their education are eligible to do so without taking on extra burden of student loans. <clears throat> Parents who are out here today, I encourage you and I encourage our graduates to take advantage of this DARE County Guarantee Scholarship Fund. Our public information officer and myself, Dorothy Hester, rode around the county for several months, a year, a couple of years ago, promoting this. And um, we're hoping that we're going to keep singing that song because we want our parents and we want our students to enroll at COA. Did I mention no out of pocket costs for tuition? Thank you once again to all of my fellow commissioners for your continued commitment to making education a top priority in Dare County and for establishing this scholarship program that has truly transformed the lives of so many students and families within our community. Let me just close from the vision of higher education that our community leaders begin to bring to life a half a decade ago, the completion of this facility we're celebrating here today, we have all witnessed an incredible transformation taking place on this site since construction began. This cutting edge facility and the wide range of curriculum that will be offered on this campus will undoubtedly have a positive lifetime impact on the lives of thousands of students in Dare County who will come here not only to study and earn a higher education, but to ultimately transform their lives and transform their tomorrows. With that said, I'd like to thank everyone once again for celebrating this moment and this occasion here today. I'm going to turn this over back to Dr. Bagwell, who will ask some students to share how transforming your tomorrow is more than just a COA motto, because the experiences they've had at COA have allowed them to truly transform their own futures thanks to the education offerings that are available here in Dare County. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's important to understand the history of where we have been and how we got here, and I appreciate the chairman sharing that. But as he said, it's also vitally important that we hear from students and see how not only a building, but an experience helps to transform their tomorrows, as you heard the chairman say. That's something that we deeply believe in here at College of the Albemarle. And I'm going to introduce you to four students who are going to speak to us over the next few minutes. I'm going to introduce them all right now, and they're going to come up in successive order. But pay attention to their story because they are four students, but they represent thousands of students who have similar stories and similar experiences and similar opportunities across the COA platform 
but also here in Dare County, the influence and the opportunity that exists for your students who are graduating this year, next year, and for decades to come, thank you to the Dare County Commissioners. So without further ado, let me introduce our students. Ben Brown, Ben wave when I just say your name, guys. Ben Brown, Welding Technology and Dare Guarantee student. Shank Austin, Health and Fitness Science, also a Dare Guarantee student. Sam, Adding, Sam Adams, excuse me, Welding Technology. He's a CCP student at First Flight High School. That means he's still in high school and taking college courses. And then we have Zoe Heath Morris, Associate in Sciences, Dare Guarantee student also. So without further ado, students come please forward. Hello, my name is Ben Brown. I live down in the rain in Wanchies and I graduated from Manual High School last year. I am currently studying welding here at the DARE campus. I chose COA because of the welding program and its incredible reputation. Also, COA's DARE guarantee allows me to attend school without the worry of paying for the education. It was the best option to attend school without leaving and being able to continue doing the things I love within the community. My goal after graduating from the program is to stay in Dare County. I operate my own boat for the tourism industry and focus on building welding networks in and outside of the community. I plan to use welding to fabricate parts and make repairs to the local fishing industries. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shank Austin, and I'm a 2021 graduate of Cape Hatter Secondary School. I am currently in my first year at COA as a health and fitness science major. The reason I chose to attend COA was originally to complete my general education courses as well as receive my associate's degree in health and fitness science. The DARE Guarantee Scholarship has been a huge help in my academic career. Not only is my tuition covered, but I also receive scholarship for my books as well as a computer stipend, which I've used to purchase a new computer for my online classes. It is such an amazing feeling to be able to just focus on school and not have to worry about paying for classes, books, or computers. The DARE Guarantee program is proof that COA is doing all it can to help students like me succeed. After graduating from COA with my health and fitness science degree, I plan to attend Craven Community College in Newburgh, North Carolina. There I will study to become a physical therapy assistant. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Hello everyone, my name is Samuel Adams and I live in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. I attend First Flight High School and COA welding program in Manio. I chose to try welding after a simple video online and I tried to give it a shot. After my first day of welding at the program here, I rushed home to tell my mom I was gonna do this for the rest of my life. This program has helped me set a great foundation for all future welding inquiries whilst being free thanks to the dual enrollment, pro dual enrollment program. I'm soon to graduate high school this semester and earn my welding diploma in the summer. Once completed, I plan to start the apprenticeship school in Newport News, and if things don't work out, I can start at welding at, at Bayless Boatworks in Wanchies. I'm excited and thankful for all the opportunities that the dual enrollment program offers, and thankful for this new location to accommodate. But most, in thank, but most importantly, I'm thankful for everyone who supported me along the way. Hi, my name is Zoe Morris and I'm a 2021 graduate of First Flight High School. Currently, I am working on my associates in science with the transfer pathway. I chose to attend COA for four reasons. One, being it was close to home. Two, I can get just as great of an education here as I can anywhere else. Three, being that I had an amazing chance to receive the DARE Guarantee Scholarship, which allows me to go to COA for two years free of charge. And four, because it gives me time to think about what career I wanna pursue. Receiving the DARE Guarantee Scholarship has allowed me to focus on my schoolwork because I don't have to worry about being, into, um, being in student debt after I graduate. It means a lot to me to have my college taken care of because I don't have to worry about tuition, books, and all of that great stuff. Along with the many great 
scholarships DRCOA has provided their students, they've also provided, provided us with a great new campus to, to attend classes at. Currently, my future plans are undecided as I have a few interests changed, but I'm leaning towards p pursuing a career in physical therapy. Thank you so much. Students, thank you for sharing your stories, but more importantly, thank you for allowing us to be part of your story. We know you have choices and we're glad that you chose COA. So I'm going to make some closing comments uh, in just a, just a few minutes. And we're going to then move to a ribbon cutting and then we invite you all to join us for some refreshments for some tours of the facility. It's wide open, come please take a few minutes to see what, uh, what we've been talking about. It's a beautiful building outside, but it's fantastic inside and it provides so many opportunities for us to move forward. And then I hope you'll stick around and come back often. But in closing, I wanted to say a couple of things and I hope you'll bear with me for a second because when we talk about transforming tomorrows, we don't just do it because it's catchy. We don't do it because you're supposed to have a motto and a logo. We don't do it because other people do similar things. We talk about transformation of students tomorrows and community tomorrows because it's imperative that we do that. It's vital that we help people to see what they can become, help them to get to where they wanna go. I want to tell you a story about a student in my past that I want you all to think about as you leave here today and, and think about the impact that this building and the activities around the building will have. When I worked on my dissertation research for my doctorate years ago, I had a chance to interview a number of students as part of the research. And one student's story stuck with me more than any other. And I think it'll resonate with you today because there have been so many people driving by this campus as we have been gathered here together today. And I can't help but wonder what they're thinking, all these people out here. I wonder if they recognize is what's going on at the college. Do they recognize it's a college? But the student I want to tell you about today was a student who was an excellent high school student. She moved, her family had some rough times, things kind of fell apart in her life. And she went from being a fantastic high school student to not finishing high school and having to get her GED at a later time. And so she lived in the community that I was in years and years ago. And she said to me, and this is the part that will it rip my heart out and it may rip yours out as well, that she did not know what she was gonna do with her life. And every time she rode by the college, she would look at the college and say, I don't know who goes there, but it's not people like me who can't even graduate from high school. That's not true. We're exactly for her. We're exactly for that student that's riding by here today and doesn't know what they're going to do with their life tomorrow. We're for the folks who have been working and not fulfilled in their life's work. We want them to come back and participate in what we have here. We don't just have a logo to have a logo and a motto to have a motto, and we didn't just build a building to see a pretty building in downtown Mania. We are about transformation of lives. Dare County is about transformation of lives. The Board of Trustees is about, we don't pay them a dime, and we're going to double their pay next year. <laughs> but they're about transformation of lives. And when people ride by here, we don't want them to look at this beautiful building and think it's out of their reach. It's for them. It was built for them. So I end all of my public comments today and these times with this, a plea to you. We have an ask of you before you leave here, and that is share something about COA in your circle of influence. Make sure that you encourage people in your life to come out here and check us out, to find out what this college is about, to look at the opportunities that are before them if only they will grab the bull by the horns, as they say. The D.A.R.E. Guarantee now has multiple tiers. 
for people to take advantage of. There are scholarships in North Carolina that we could bring to bear to help us to educate people of Dare County and the other six counties that we serve. Please take an opportunity in your life to share the transformation that is possible. And I'll tell you that you won't just help them transform their life. What you'll see is that there will be a family transition. The trajectory will change for a whole family. You watch when a student enrolls in college at COA, you'll watch them and see what happens to their family for generations to come, and that inflection point will be the enrollment and the successful, successful completion of a program here. So please share that. So we're going to break now and do a ribbon cutting. Please stay with us through the ribbon cutting. And then we're going to have some refreshments, some tours. But we also have a gift for you today. You see some of our faculty, staff, students, some others sitting on a blanket that has the logo of the college has the date as a memento of today, but we have this beautiful lawn that the chairman spoke about. We want to encourage people to come back out and listen to music on the lawn. We want to have speaker series out here. We want to do all sorts of things to draw the attention of the people going into and out of Manio, North Carolina. So we want to make sure that this is all about the community too. And you'll see some beautiful spaces that are available for you to use as a community member, maybe a board member, uh, your board could come out here and meet, et cetera. But before I close my comments, I have to recognize just a couple of other people. And uh, I'm gonna ask them, and uh, they're probably not gonna be real happy with me, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So Valerie Mueller, Valerie, if you'll wave, please. Valerie is my, yeah. Valerie is my executive assistant, and she and Dorothy for the county and a bunch of other people, but Valerie has been working on this for what feels like years, to her probably decades, but she's done a tremendous job. The other recognition that I want to make from the college's perspective is Jim Davison. Jim, Jim is our chief operations officer, and Jim has been looking at plans, and he has to hear it when I don't like something. He has to go deliver the message, and he has to make sure that things are done. And I have been, uh, I have been chewing his ears the last few weeks, and he's been fantastic, and I think you'll see the fruits of all of that. And then finally, um, he's already been recognized, but I did want to say to Tim Sweeney, our dean on this campus, that we appreciate the work that you do every day and that you've done for all of these days leading up to where we are today. But I also want to close with this. Tim's family's here today. So Tim Sweeney's family, if you'll ra wave your hands, please, so we can recognize you. So I think this is... A, yeah, thank you all for being here, and I think this is important because we talk about the COA family. So when something happens in the family, you come out and support it, don't you? So you're here to support your dad, our dean, Tim Sweeney, but that's the COA family. They're all here, and they're supporting one another. And some of us are family by blood, and some of us are family because we've been associated with this college. But thank you, Tim, for all you do, and thank you, family, for being here, and thank you all for being with us today. Now we're going to cut a ribbon, and we're going to celebrate, and, uh, and I'm going to apologize to those of you that I forgot to name when you come by me uh, as we are talking. So thank you again for being here and for all that you do for COA.